Let's get back uh, to the IMF. Uh, and again, Christine Lagarde, the French finance minister, has been chosen as the next managing director that ends the search for a successor to Dominic Strauss-Kahn. But questions remain about the way the fund went about selecting her and also her challenges ahead. Let's get more from Washington, D.C. Dan Mitchell, senior fellow at the Cato Institute, to joins us for more. And Dan, I guess the uh, first question is, throughout this entire process, um, were you at all surprised that it would be someone else besides Christine Lagarde? The Europeans clearly wanted to keep uh, the IMF managing director position in their backyard. And while there was a brief little bit of interest in a candidate from Mexico who probably would have been more friendly to free markets, uh, I think the Europeans clearly wanted to maintain this tradition that they controlled the IMF. And the problem with that, of course, is that a lot of the money that Greece owes and that Spain owes is to the big European banks. And so there's a question, can the IMF actually approach the sovereign debt crisis in Europe in a nonpartisan or, or non, uh, uh, in, in a way that doesn't make people think that they have their finger on the scale somehow? Yeah, well, Christine Lagarde, she has a, a lot on her plate, of course, as being the next head of the IMF. First up is those European debt concerns. What about the, this French proposal, which comes from the French finance ministry that uh, she still heads up technically, uh, about rolling over Greek debt? To you, is that a default? If you're not paying investors what they've been promised, when they've been promised, it's default. Now, whether or not the IMF and the major governments of the world can twist the arms of the rating agencies so that they're willing to lie, that's a separate question, but it's like the emperor has no clothes. Everyone knows what default really means. And just because a bunch of politicians and a bunch of people who are being pressured by politicians, maybe they'll say something's okay, but you know and I know what's really going on. And the fundamental problem is Greece has still not undertaken the reforms that are necessary. They haven't fired the bureaucrats. They haven't privatized all the assets in the country. And in effect, they're looking to the IMF as a, as a substitute for making those reforms. But can they get the reforms across? You saw those uh, demonstrations taking place in the capital. It turned into rioting. You know, a lot of unhappy Greeks out there. Well, it's time for the Greeks to wake up and smell the coffee. For decades, they've been living beyond their means. They're not producing enough, and they think somehow there's some magic source of money. And the problem in the Greek economy is that there are too many people riding in the wagon and not enough people pulling the wagon. And to the extent that they get more bailouts, either from the IMF or from the European community, it simply is going to delay the necessary reforms and it's going to make the eventual crisis worse because the more you get them into debt with more bailout packages the worse the eventual defaults going to become it will be much better for Greece and much better for the international financial community and for the global economy to cut Greece loose it's time for the Greek people to wake up and realize they can't loot and mooch their way through life Wow, that's a statement. Uh, okay, well, let me ask you this, Dan. Uh, Christine Lagarde, new head of the IMF, uh, do you think she's going to be able to get not only Greece, but the rest of Europe under control? If you look at the long-run numbers, because of the aging populations and because of these entitlement programs and the already huge size of the welfare state in Europe, there are major problems. Greece and Portugal are just the tip of the iceberg. What's going to happen with Spain? What's going to happen with Italy? These countries have taxed and spent themselves into a ditch. And what concerns me about the IMF is the IMF just looks at short-term stability. We'll see if you can raise some taxes and at least pretend to cut some spending, and we'll try to paper over the problems. You can't do that anymore. The welfare state is collapsing upon itself, uh, and the only the only way that these countries are going to fix their problems is if they know they can't put the bill on somebody else. And this is why bailouts are so pernicious. They convince politicians that they can postpone the day of reckoning. And I hope that the new head of the IMF realizes that, but she comes out of a French political culture that is very much pro-big government, pro-welfare state. So I'm not optimistic. All right. Daniel, thank you so much for your insights. Uh, I learned a new term, loot and mooch. Thank you, thank you uh, for teaching that to me. Daniel Mitchell, senior fellow at the Cato Institute.